This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast, as always, brought to you by the Oz American Aces and our wonderful sponsor, Brooks Blooms, who we absolutely love. My name's Adam Trelaw, of course, and with me, with a nice, big, beautiful smile on his face and wearing a nice, maybe new sponsored hat, Sprite. Maybe that could be a new sponsor, even though, because you're usually wearing the Brooks Blooms hats, but you're not this week. Uh, Joshy Dunkley, how you going, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. It's definitely not a new sponsor, that's for sure. It's uh, just a hat that I had in the cupboard that I've got from some random shop, and I thought, why not change it up tonight? So, decided to wear it, mate, but how are you going as well? Going good, mate. Going good. For what it's worth, since you're wearing a Sprite hat, what's your favorite soft drink? Give me your, give me your top three soft drinks. Uh, I haven't actually been drinking a lot of soft drink lately. It's been a sort of a bit of a thing of mine, but if I'm to choose one, it'd probably be Coke Zero. All right, top three, mate. I'm I'm a man of rankings. Give me your top three. One Coke Zero, Coke Zero. I'll go S- Sprite and Solo. Not bad, mate. Not bad. You want to hear what's yours? What's yours? Yeah, I'll go Solo. Solo is easily the best. Then I'll go a Sun Kissed would be second. Oh, and then and then I'm going Pepsi Max. So the debate. So they're my top three, by the way. For our listeners out there, make sure you send through your top three because uh, I love hearing these. But Pepsi Max or Coke Zero, have you seen the debate? Are you a Coke Zero or Pepsi Max man? Clearly Coke Zero because it's your third favorite. But do you yeah, like Coke Zero? So we had this debate at the footy club. Um, we did a poll on who, uh, you know, the Coke Zero, Pepsi Max rank. And it was a lot closer than what I thought where Coke Zero just won. I feel like Pepsi Max is like it's a bit flatter than what Coke is. I agree, right? But this is where the difference is for me. Coke Zero. So if you were to drink them both, right? I love how we're talking about food and drink already. Love it. If you if you were to put them together, you would have a sip of the Coke Zero and then you'd have a sip of the Pepsi Max. Yeah, it may taste a little bit flatter, but it tastes sweeter. You drink a Coke Zero, it tastes like nothing. It tastes like absolutely nothing. Yeah, fair enough. That's a, yeah, I guess a fair call, but I still like Coke Zero better. <laughs> of course you do. Got to be different. But um. Uh, but no, I'm going well. I'm um, considering all things, mate. Obviously, uh, from a footy point of view, it hasn't been ideal for us um, with the last couple of weeks. But other than that, going really well. It's um, it's uh, it's nice. The one good thing about um, our schedule at the moment is we're playing every six days. So we're uh, although albeit it's been pretty tough, considering you know what it's like. Six day turnarounds are pretty uh, solid, but especially as you get older. Um, but no, it's nice that we can, you know, hash out what we need to hash out and then focus on, uh, on the games, um, on the game ahead. But other than that, it's been a good week. I was able to get to, uh, Adelaide on the Saturday and I watched Kimmy play a 150th, which is, uh, which is incredible. I mean, I don't think we gave her too much of a pump up last week. So I just quickly want to say what an incredible achievement that that is from Kimmy. I don't, I think there was only three or maybe four players off the top of my head, um, at the Firebirds who played 150 games. So um, incredible achievement considering all things that she's gone through. She recently had a, a, a back surgery in December where, um, you know, she was kind of at a crossroads with whether she plays or not because um, that was kind of the advice. But, um, mm. you know, she got some uh, good or- good doctor's orders and, yeah, she got to play her 150th. So it was incredible to be there and watch her in, in person. And as you said, the Firebirds are going to be good this year, mate, and they played out of their skin. And your girl, Tipper, best game I've ever seen her play. <laughs> yeah, she was good. I was watching back here in Brizzy, but I thought, yeah, obviously well done to Kimmy on 150. It was a huge milestone and massive game. And I wish they had got the chocolates for her in the end, losing by one point. But I was sitting on the edge of the couch up here, mate. I was home alone by myself, like cheering at home. I was like trying to get him over the line, but wasn't good enough in the end. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was – the girls will take a lot of confidence out of that performance, I feel, and um, it will hold them in good stead for the rest of the season. Very exciting. Mm, it was. It was – I've never um, been to Adelaide Entertainment Centre, and I actually didn't know that they didn't play many – like, so their their home games wasn't necessarily there last year. They only played a few games where this year I think they're playing majority of their home games there. It's unbelievable atmosphere. 
It's pretty cool there, isn't it? It's like really mm. dark in the crowd and then the, the mm. courts sort of like reminds me of NBA a little bit. Like yeah, yeah definitely. really dark in the crowd and then the environment, everything's focused on the court. I agree. I'll tell you what I do love from the game is I love that so for the, for those who didn't watch it, we were it was back and forth in the last quarter, and then we had a chance to essentially win it on the buzzer. So it was essentially a buzzer beater, and Nelly had a yeah. shot, and obviously obviously we didn't win, so she missed. But I love the fact that we went for it. I was all for it. I mean, you could take the easy one pointer, tie it, but I was all for the two pointer. What was your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I didn't think about the one pointer at all the whole mm. time. I was just thinking, oh, we're going to win this with a two, so go for it. Because if you go to extra time, you know, you never know. You've got the momentum at the time. Why not have a crack at the two? If you get it, so be it and you win. But if you don't, yeah. oh, well. Yeah, mate. It was it was incredible. Um, uh, It made me think about, so put yourself in a position, right, where you're kicking for goal after the siren because obviously Nelly took the – trying to put this into context from an AFL point of view. So Nelly took the – obviously the catch inside the two meter and – took the mm. shot say you're in uh nally's position how you like how are you feeling like because i think about it and i reckon you can't see me but if i'm lining up my hands would be like this i'll be trying to pull the yeah. player over i'd be doing something where i'm not taking this shot well like how do you reckon you would go in that situation no i'd be shitting myself too if i was having a <laughs> shot to win the game especially if it was after the siren jeez i don't know what i'd do i'd melt i'd probably get out in the full <laughs> <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon I'd miss my foot. I mean, wait, yeah. I, when I thought about it after the game, because I rewatched the shot and I'm thinking, wow, what a, what a situation to be in. That is just unbelievable. And, you, you know, I've got to mention Tipper and the way that she was playing. I mean, I, I'd say it's the best game I've seen her play. And I genuinely mean that. I felt like, um, you know, she, uh, she's she been battling a little bit with her knee. And the way that she was moving around, mate, it looked like she had no issue with her knee. And, she was zipping in and out. She was setting up Nelly. She was shooting two pointers all game, mate. She played unbelievable. Yeah, she did. It was good to see, and um, obviously against her old mob too. So mm-hmm. to go down there and for her first game back at the Firebirds to put on a bit of a show was awesome for her. So I think she's she's pretty sore. I know she's sore after the weekend, but good that uh, she could go out there and and play good netball. Couldn't agree more. Now they get their first home game this week against the Giants, I believe, which will be a yep. ripping game. And there's a little bit of netball talk for you, for our fans out there, especially our um, our female fans who of our podcast who uh, always say when I see them, you've got to talk more netball. So we gave you a little bit of a spill in the netball. It's, um, it's a passion of mine and yours, so it's good. But other than that, mate, uh, how was your week? What did you get up to other than footy? Anything exciting? Yeah, no, and just before we, before I answer your question, I just wanted to mention uh, two, to talk about females, the two girls that came to our captain's run last week. So there was these two girls there, right? You know how we do swish? You know you do swish mm-hmm. on the, mm-hmm. the video messaging. Yeah. So I've, I've got a swish once and at the same time, it was this, like there were two requests in my thing. So, I, But it was for the same person, same name. So I was like, I wonder if this is the same person. Sure enough, this girl told me at the captain's run the other day in Melbourne that someone had requested for her and then another friend had requested for her as well. So she got two video messages on her birthday and I just wanted to – she said, make sure you give me a shout-out on the podcast because they watch a podcast. So I thought I'll I'll do it for you this week. Oh, that's nice. I um For what it's worth, I when I was um, – so where the girls stayed, they stayed – pretty much across from where Adelaide Oval is and it was the same night that Port Adelaide played Freo. So as I've come out of seeing the girls in the hotel, we went and had dinner after the game and whatnot, we're walking out. So it's me, Lazi, uh, I think Macy was there. I think it was just us and Kimmy. We're all walking out and of course, it's when the game's over. So all the Port Adelaide fans have come out and a couple of, oh, what's he doing here? I didn't know the Bulldogs were playing here and all this stuff. It was pretty funny. But there was a group of boys uh, who I know they listen to the potty. There was a big group of them and we got a photo and some of them threw up the A sign. So um, Love that. So those group of boys, thank you so much for uh, asking for that photo and then putting up the A sign. It means a lot um, running into a lot of our fans. I really, I really, uh, sometimes I pinch myself when, I think of some of our fans who, you know, say, I'll oh, put up the A sign or whatever it may be. It's pretty cool that we can um, have an impact on those people's lives. But, um, yeah, back to what I was saying. How uh, yeah. how was your week? How was your week, mate? What did you get up to? No, nah, it was a good week. Um, we went down to Melbourne pretty early last week on Wednesday. So it was the day after we did the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. So pretty quickly. And 
obviously played the game and uh, which was a good outcome for us and I'm sure we'll touch on it soon but uh, came back to Brizzy on the Friday so Friday morning which was good and um, had to do a few things around the house and recovery and all that kind of stuff so spent the weekend kind of chilling out we didn't have training until Monday um, so it was nice to have a couple of days off and really wind down because we've got a 10-day break into the cats this week so um, kicked back on the couch mate just cruised around cleaned up I actually Tipper will hate me for saying this because I asked her to uh, vacuum the house before we before she left and uh, she didn't do it so I had to do it myself when I got home <laughs> you'll love that okay okay you would have been ropeable were you ropeable <laughs> yeah I was filthy <laughs> Well, it sounds like you be, you need to be get, get to work because in the f- background here, I can, you know, usually you're ni- nice and neat and tidy. You've got your beautiful shoes there that are <laughs> piled away, you know, in a stand and whatnot, but you've got a whole bunch of shoes there. Like, what's going on, mate? Yeah, well, those ones are just sort of a couple of new pairs or just not good ones that I've got at the moment. So I just sort of pile them in the corner and, uh, yeah, it kind of looks cool. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. Well, you know what, mate? Just uh, focus on that so next week you can have that and then you can vacuum throughout the week. Um, All right. But no, but no uh, we actually got to see each other as well on the uh, on the Wednesday. And actually, when we went to – no, was it Wednesday or senior? Wednesday or Thursday? I've seen you Thursday. Wednesday. Uh, nah, Thursday. 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 That's right. Senior day of the game. And we went to Lenny where we used to always go uh, for brekkie pre-game. And we actually had one of the um, – the waiters there come over and say, what did he say? Something about the potty? No, he said uh, something about the AFL fantasy, like captain me, oh, that's captain right. me in yeah. the fantasy tonight or something. That's right. He said, I'm going to captain you in fantasy. And boy, oh boy, you probably didn't let him down. I mean, I don't check stats or fantasy, but I know from your game itself was unbelievable. So no doubt you didn't let him down. So hopefully he's listening and next time we're there, he can uh, give you a great big hug and a thank you. It was good to see you. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's always good to see you, mate. I appreciate you obviously being an hour late and telling me you are going to be there at 12 and got there at 1 and I was just sitting there like, yeah, <laughs> I was waiting for you. Hang on. I wasn't late. Was I late? I don't even remember. I came straight from the club. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you were a little bit late, but it's all good. We'll let it pass. Oh, well, next time I'll let you take the Uber back instead of driving you. <laughs> see how I'm trying to avoid uh, the footy at the moment because – I know, I know uh, we're not going overly well at the moment, so there's going to be a couple of questions about that. Um, what about uh, Saturday? I want to bring up our, uh, our passion for horse racing. Pride of Jenny, did you see that thing run? I did, and I was going to – I actually thought – you know what I thought? This was going to be, be your bloom of the week because I was thinking – you know, I was thinking about a bloom of the week and for our special segment that we do, and I was like, Adam will definitely have Pride of Jenny. But, yeah, no, it was an incredible run, mate. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I haven't either, and I was sitting in the hotel in Adelaide, and I was with one of my great mates, Casey Moores, and we were sitting back watching the race, and he doesn't watch horse racing at all. And when there was about 1,200 to go, he goes, that horse isn't losing. Like, I've never seen this. That horse is not losing. And I was like, mate, I've never seen this. It ain't losing. And then, yeah, lo and behold, it didn't lose, mate. What an incredible run. Unbelievable. Yeah, we'll go down in the the history books. I don't think it was actually a good time or something. Is that what they no, said? It no, it wasn't. No, it was just the second and the third um, jockeys or the jockeys on the horses. They just held back, mate. I mean, I don't get it. I've seen this thing today. So there's this uh, question that got sent. I'm going to ask you, who would we, who would you back in a 2,000-meter race, Pride of Jenny, Very Elegant, or Winks? Uh, probably take Winks. I would take Winks too. Um, and I'll tell you what would be unbelievable is if Winks was in that race, because I know Winks used to come home like a wet sail. Imagine watching Winks chase down Pride of Jenny and win yeah. that race from there. I mean, no discrediting Pride of Jenny. What an incredible horse. I mean, that was, uh, that was unbelievable to watch. It was, mate. Uh, what about the, the rest of the weekend for you? What did that hold outside of the netball on Saturday night? Um, Oh, well, I stayed not too far from uh, – so we stayed at Crown Plaza in, in, in Adelaide, obviously, and the girls stayed down that road there. You'd know it, the main road in Adelaide where all the yeah. hotels are. Well, anyway, wow. most most exciting thing I got from that was catching those scooters, mate. The old um, – <laughs> the old what's, – what's the app called? Beam. Chuck the beam over it. 
ride down to the Kim's hotel, say good day, ride back. That was probably the most uh, <laughs> most thrilling thing I got out of being in Adelaide because I literally didn't leave. Um, oh, I left the hotel, walked around Rundle Mall, and um, I mean that's pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of uh, Queensland. Uh, so Brisbane set up, you know that outdoor shopping complex kind of thingy in Brisbane. Kind of reminds me of that. Um, yeah. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Adelaide is, I mean, we experience gather around, but it is a massive footy state. They love their footy there. They sure do, especially when both teams get a win on the weekend. They were pretty good on the weekend, both of them. Mm, I mean, even just being in the crowd of the Port Adelaide, well, Port Adelaide fans, as I was like, leaving the hotel, mate, unbelievable how passionate they are and how they know pretty much every player. And and as you said, mate, they uh, the both teams getting a win and Port, the way Port Adelaide are playing, it's been pretty cool. But um. Yeah, other than that, I didn't do much other than still over the game on the Friday with the one that we lost, which I guess we may as well. <laughs> I guess we may Might as well, start mate. Talk, start, talk, start talking footy. We'll start with you because your game was first. Um, yep. Yeah, give us a uh, rundown. I mean, you guys played unbelievably well and you, yourself, you, you individually just keep building and you've had two absolute unbelievable games. So, yeah, how did how'd you feel out there? No, nah, it was good. I, I think everyone would probably... Yeah, that watched it would have been, um, I suppose, quite impressed with how he performed and us as a group. You know, we probably we've always, and I've been on here saying it, like we've always believed that we could play that way. Probably just hadn't been executing it as as well as what we would have liked. So moments like you know that you saw on the weekend where you know backs one on one winning contests and we didn't turn the ball over as much in crucial areas of the ground and you know our, our mids really got to work. We had a really like clear plan and how we were going to attack Melbourne and um, some of their strengths. So it was really good. It was positive and um, yeah, it'll go a long way with, you know, for the rest of our year, I feel like hopefully it springboards us into the next few games and um, yeah, no, no greater test too than this week in, in the Geelong yeah. Cats who were flying. Yeah, no, I um, I second everything you say. It looked like that. You guys were playing mate, from the get-go, played your brand and what we're all known to seeing with the Brisbane Lions, even – even with some players that you have out, I mean, I mentioned Zach Bailey now who's just been reported that he's going to miss another, well, not mm. another, miss four weeks, which is a big out, big loss to cover because he's an absolute gun. Um, it also, must also give you great confidence, you know, obviously a lot of people bring up when you guys travel or when you play in Melbourne at the MCG in particular, I must give you great confidence now that like that's not really what people need to talk about. You can play grounds well, you can play against oppositions at different grounds well. Yeah, it's important. I feel, I, I think with that one, it's hard because you play, we've in the past, in the history of the club, have played really good teams at the MCG. So, you know, the grand final, it's Collingwood. Last year, we we played Hawthorne there, who probably weren't going so well at the time, but they knocked off some good teams at the G last year. So, like, the, all our games there have been hard. So, it's always been a thing in, our, in the back of our mind that's been like, well, we're playing good teams. So, it's not us playing on the MCG. It's just the way that we've been executing the game plan, I, so, I suppose, on the on a bigger ground. So, like I said, clear. it was a really clear focus this week into what we needed to do against the Ds. And sure enough, it worked. And um, we got ourselves a four points again, which is really important. But uh, in terms of travel, it's I've never seen like – obviously, playing in Melbourne, you don't really understand – and you'd understand because you're at Giants for a little bit. But last week, so we go to Adelaide last week for gather round. We can't. We play on Friday. We travelled back Friday night, so we get back to Brisbane at like one a.m. Saturday morning. Mm. Three days or four days later, we're back at the airport to go to Melbourne to then play on a six day turnaround against Melbourne Footy Club, who are flying. So it's like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's so hard, but you just. You, it's like it's just natural for you. So you build up this, I don't know, you're just diligent in what you're doing and you just cop it on the chin and get it done and get down there and get back and sure enough, yeah, lucky to get the four points. It's good. Yeah, it, actually, it's a great point because I like take that stuff for granted. I kind of forget about that because you're right. When we when I was at the Giants, mate, we travelled almost every week and you know sometimes yeah. we would play home games at um, – Monica over when um, obviously I was there, which is even a travel in itself. So you are right. I yep. think if anything, and like you could probably second this, it probably builds a bit of camaraderie between you and the boys because you're kind of with each other all the time. You're staying at the hotel together. You're seeing each other. You're kind of living in each other's pockets. And, and you definitely mm. probably can see that reflective on your performance when it gets to the game on the weekend. Yeah, it does. It, it definitely builds that resilience too. I feel like, you know, you're 
you make it, you know, and Melbourne did it uh, when they went to Adelaide a couple of weeks ago. They wanted to go there and they're on a mission to get the two wins against the two Adelaide teams. Like that, those kind of road trips that you can build up a bit of a, a theme around is sort of what mm. you do in those moments. And so, yeah, I, I think the Melbourne win last week for us was really imp- impressive after, you know, having to travel so much from, like I said before. So, yeah, it was a really good win for us. And, yeah, look forward to this week now. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's great. And also, Lockie Neal didn't realize, but we gave him obviously a pump up last week. So, we don't, he doesn't need to get another pump up because he's an absolute superstar. But he's won in every milestone he's played. Yeah. Yeah. He told me that during the week. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to keep that <laughs> one tight lipped until such time as we win. And then I'll let it out everywhere. So, I was just, yeah. Oh, good. well, at least the footy world knows now it's an absolute lock guarantee for if Lockie Neal plays 300, 350, 400, your Brisbane Lions are going to win the game. So, um, at least yeah. you can take some confidence going into that. But no, well done. It was a good game from you boys on the weekend and yourself individually. Another unbelievable game in my opinion. It felt like, um, as you said, I think three weeks ago, you feel like you're growing into the season and your last three games have been unreal, mate. So well done. Thank you, mate. So let's move on to your game. I know you're probably dreading that you want to talk about it, but uh, yeah, I didn't get to watch it, but I saw I was checking the um, scores pretty frequently at the rugby. Uh so yeah, talk us through it. How was how are you feeling? What was the build up like? Did you notice that anything was I don't know, off at all? Or was it more just on the day, you know, just didn't bounce your way? Um, no, I, I would never fault our preparation, how we prepare. We were a very professional group and um, you know, hand on heart will always say that. They're a great bunch of guys and I feel like we always give ourselves a great opportunity and we prepare really well. Um yeah, I definitely felt like in terms of the game we let ourselves down especially early on when you know there was chances where we could have put a score on Essendon and missed some opportunities and um, butchered the ball going inside 50. It felt like we turned the ball over in really, really good spots, but then going back inside, we just let ourselves down. Um, I probably sound like a bit of a broken record because that's, sort of, that's what I say a lot when we lose, but that is the reality. We, we let ourselves down a little bit when we turn the ball over, go back inside 50, and whether it's because – I don't know, we're kicking it to a three-on-one or a two-on-one or just missing the kick or whatever it may be. It's um, kind of fine that that's probably been a little bit of an issue for us. So definitely felt like, um, you know, that let us down, uh, particularly early on in the game. Uh, we had a, I think we got out to maybe a 10-point lead or so, maybe early in the third or late in the second. I don't really remember, but there was a couple easy goals that we allowed to Essen in that that is, you know, as you as you know, mate, when you're up and you're playing well and feel like you're working really hard to score, um, when a team then easily scores on you or scores quick and consecutively, it can be a little bit deflating. And I definitely felt like it was a little bit deflating. Um, you know, for my, this is how I individually felt. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating. And then, yeah, full credit to Essen. I mean, you can't can't discredit them at all. They they clearly came with the plan and how they wanted to play and um, I was fully impressed by their pressure around the ball and their contest work and you know the way they commit so many numbers to the ball and then spread off that was exceptional and um, unfortunately I said last week we've got to kind of got to stop them from um, kicking their way through us and I felt like they did that a little bit at times um, which eventuated into an easy score for them so um, that all kind of came to Ahead in the in the last bit of the game, especially in the last quarter, felt like they just yeah just outworked us and outran us, and um, that was probably the most frustrating thing from our point of view because um, you know we come off a game against as you said Geelong, who are one of the best teams in the comp, where right up to the final siren we were in the game versus um, you know we kind of shot ourselves in the foot in the last quarter and Essendon were just way too good for us. So yeah, mate, very uh, very disappointed from the outcome of the game. So did you feel the game was uh, quite even up until three-quarter time or did you have the you know, more momentum at any stage? Like what was it like out there? No, I definitely felt even, mate. I never I never doubt um, the boys. I feel like if – yeah, I always feel like we're in the game. Doesn't um, – you know, it doesn't matter to me. Maybe that's just because of my competitive nature. But, yeah, definitely felt like we're in the game. Um, you know, as I just touched on before, felt like we would work really hard to score and then – we would just allow an easy goal, which, as I said, is you know can be backbreaking at times. And yeah. I think when we allowed a couple easy goals in that last quarter, you know what it's like. A team gets a full run of momentum, and a team like Essendon, who I think are a really good side. I mean, they've showed early signs this season. Other than the Port Adelaide game, they've been outstanding in all their other games. So, mm. um, 
I feel like they're a really, really good um, contest side, have some great players in their group. They've got a really good midfield. Um, you know, they've got some great ball users. And yeah, we just allowed them to have a momentum um, shift and run in that last quarter. And as I said, they just outworked us. And um, yeah, the most disappointing thing is that um, we ultimately let them run away with the game when um, the previous weeks we, we kind of hadn't. So uh, yep. oh, hopefully we can move on quickly. Yeah, for sure. I've got two more questions for you. One's about a guy that we've talked about a lot and you've talked about a lot and pumped up a lot. I want to get your thoughts on what you feel like you do in his situation and how you're actually getting around him. I'm talking about Riley Sanders. Um, yeah, how do you how do you manage that? Because it's obviously been in public, you know, everyone's talking about him um, getting subbed out and whatnot, but how you feel for him? How, have you had any conversations with him? You know, yeah. let everyone in on what you've uh, what you've spoken about. Yeah, I um I have Sandoz um a beauty. I love him as I've touched on, and um you know I feel like uh, he's obviously unfortunately we've got a lot of media attention on us at the moment because we're not playing our best footy, which then you know media look for players and whatnot, and obviously Sando getting subbed out, being a first year player, having all this. Um, pressure kind of heaped on him. It, it's obviously going to be challenging for him getting subbed out. But one thing I do know, as I said, he's he's doing a heap of work with um, with Doggy. We we love Doggy, Jamie Maddox, who's our um, who's our head of development. Essentially, he, you you had him for your whole journey at the Bulldogs, and um, I yep. met him when he was when he was my under sixteen Stingrays coach. Who is one of the best, if not the best, development coach I've probably ever you know dealt with um, and had the pleasure of working with. Uh, he's spending a lot of time with Doggy and um, Doggy's trying to help him um, in the areas where, and, and I personally, you know, don't necessarily want to go into the detail about the areas that he's improving on. Of course, I talk to him as a as a fellow teammate and hopefully a mentor to yep. him um, in the areas that he wants to improve on, but that's his own business. I'm clearly not going to say that and put that out there, but um, I, I feel like a player in his situation, and I know he's doing this because, as I said, he's a pro, mate, ultimate pro and an absolute star. and, and you know, I'll say it again. He's going to be a superstar of the competition. He, my, if I was him in that situation, I would just seek out as much advice from, as I said, Doggy. I'd talk to obviously the coaches who involved with him. I'd go to some of my teammates who are trying to help me out and just ask him to help me in what I need to work on. And as I said, his area that he needs to work on, he is, he's going to, he's, watching vision, he's um, training it, he's doing things that he needs to do from a craft point of view that will help him cement a spot in the team and then ultimately perform. So um, the, the only thing you can do as a teammate is put – not the only thing, but one of the main things you can do, sorry, is just put your arm around him and be there for him and understand that he's a competitive um, he's a competitive beast who is, who's a, a young star. So – um, you know, he's going through his challenges at the moment. As I said to him today, I said, mate, it's, um, it's the joys of, uh, AFL, right? You, um, you ride the, the wave of the highs and the lows and we all go through it. So, um, you know, as I said, mate, he's, um, going to be a star and he'll, um, you know, he will come out the, the better end of it being an absolute star. And, um, one thing that I love about him is, is he's a great person. So, um, I'll always throw my, my arms around Sando. Yeah, it's a great answer, mate. Um, I feel, you know, we've all been through it, like you said, and you come into the AFL system and you just want to play. Like, that's what you, all you want to do. And, you know, that little do people know there's so many bumps along the way and mm. you've got to go through mm. your own journey to figure out and forge your career because otherwise, without that, you, it doesn't happen. So those little things will happen to everyone and um, especially the good players. And it's, like you said, it's going to hold him in really good stead down the track for sure. So look forward to seeing him back in action this weekend or well, this Thursday night against the Sainers. Mm. But my last question, mate, was just around inside the four walls. What's the messaging been like? You, you touched on earlier that, you know, you're moving on pretty quickly because you do play in a couple of days. So how is it? Is it pretty positive around the club, um, the boys up and about and ready for a big game this week? Definitely, mate. We're, um, you know, we, we ride the emotions as much as anyone us players. We know we're the ones that are out there performing and, ultimately letting ourselves down and, and we want to be better and we want to continue, continue to find areas where we can get better and improve and um, very honest with our feedback and um, getting the absolute best of ourselves out of ourselves um, weekly. And I know you can say it's a cop out or the general person can say that, but it, it gener generally is the case for us. Genuinely, sorry, not generally. 
genuinely is the case for us where we have great leaders. We've got obviously led by Mark Sponapelli, who's one of the probably, if not, not, could be the best captain in the competition, who sets such a high standard, who wants to drive this group forward. And we've got some great players underneath him who is driving the group. And, you know, we know we let ourselves down. We know that, um, you know, when we go out there, we don't ultimately don't want to lose, but we just want to perform to a point where we're proud of ourselves and we're proud of, you know, of, of we want to make our fans proud. We want to make our coaches proud. And that's something we want to do. So, uh, in terms of the week, it's been, you know, we clearly looked at the areas that let us, let us down and, and I touched on them earlier in, in the review that we had, but, you know, as I said, we were going to quickly focus on on the game going forward. We, we reviewed the game, but mm. we're then going to move quickly to the Saints. You know, we, we've, pl- we've had th- uh, three six-day breaks. Um, the Saints are a very good side. I mean, they're going to be no easier than any team in the comp. They're no easier or harder than Essendon. They're, they're going to bring their strengths and they're going to be hard to beat. So we focus on that, but... Positiveness. The coaches are great. Um, you know, we've got an unbelievable coaching group who are driven and motivated to help each individual, whether it's AFL, VFL level. Um, we've watched some um, tape, as I said, that is clear and what we need to work on, and you know what we need to bring to perform week in, week out. And I'm very positive, man. I'm very optimistic. I'm very positive. I'm very excited about what we're going to bring on um, on Thursday. Obviously, uh, Tommy Liberatore is going to be out, which is a big loss for us, but. I'm really excited about what our midfield group's going to bring because I know from myself individually and, and you know, being proud of my midfield group, I know that uh, we let ourselves down a little bit on the weekend and I love seeing us bounce back and we're, go- we're coming up against another really good midfield led by Jack Steele. So, um, yeah, mate, just um, just want to let the footy do the talking and, and just extremely excited about, you know, what we can bring on Thursday and um, just want to go back to playing our best footy. Yep, I know all too well. It was only me a couple of weeks ago, mate, speaking after we were 0-3. So I'm sure you boys will be bouncing back this week against the Saints. Uh, one thing I want to send you, I'm going to send it to you right now. Now, great mate Toby McLean has sent this in. This is a bit of a lighter note. So oh, he yeah. sent this in. It's a TikTok. We all know Toby loves his TikToks. But he, he loves his me TikTok. to get your comments. He wants me to get your comments on this video <laughs> that uh, I've, I've just sent you. So for those that... Um, are listening, it's a bit hard to oh, sort of explain. Seen, mate, I've seen this a million times already, mate. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> For those uh, that are listening, it's uh, it's a video of Adam uh, on Marvel Stadium on Thursday, on Friday night, and he's gone for a reach down the uh, the trousers and mm-hmm. had a little whatever he's done, and then he's put the finger up the nose. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have seen this TikTok. So Toby just wants an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty funny because I unconsciously, when I seen that, because all my mates sent it to me, which is hilarious because you can't get away with anything on TikTok. But my um, my first thought was like, what the heck? I don't unconsciously, unconsciously did that. The only thing I know is I wore the worst undies on the weekend. I shouldn't have worn the undies that I was wearing. And uh, <laughs> they were riding up me clacker the whole game and I was adjusting me freaking undies. And... <laughs> I know, I know it doesn't mean anything, but I, you've probably, you've actually probably heard heard me sniff on the podcast. I keep sniffing, so I've had a, I've had the sniffles for the last, I'd say, week and a bit, and put the two and two together, comes up with that video. So uh, <laughs> that's that's the only reasoning that I could have from it, because yeah, as I said, mate, my jocks were tight, and I've had the sniffles all bloody week. So, oh mate, it's quite funny. It's quite funny because. Um, I remember joking about this the other day with one of our one of their more your ex teammate, one of my great mates, Robbie McCombs. So, um, yeah, mate, pretty funny. You can't get away with anything nowadays on uh, on t- on TikTok, can you? No, you can't. I just wanted to bring that one up because it's a nice little way to finish our footy talk from last week. I thought it was a good one from Toby. <laughs> No, I did like it. I had a great laugh when I seen it. And as I said, a lot of my great mates sent them through to you. I'm actually surprised you didn't send it earlier because you probably seen it, but you just wanted to wait for the potty. But I was waiting uh, for this. <laughs> quite funny. I um even I laughed at that. I just freaking had a great laugh. Um <laughs> other than uh other than that, other than the uh, excitement of the, the game on the Friday, any uh oh you actually you actually in the uh, news today from I didn't read it because I don't read anything, but I seen there was a quote of something that you said in one of your interviews today about head high tackling or something. Do you want to um, elaborate on what you were saying? Yeah. No, I did a press conference today and they asked me about the like Charlie Cameron case and I just talked about how 
I feel like some like certain certain instances and players these days are, and I said we're guilty of it too. I, you know, you you're trying to win a free kick, so in those moments where you know you, you're getting tackled or you might be over the ball, like everyone's talked about Jack Ginnivan and all that kind of stuff, where he raises the arm and some people are dipping their head trying to get a free kick. Like I think players are manipulating the rules a little bit in terms of. Yeah, that kind of stuff to try and win a free kick and win field position to then be able to go forward and score. So I just talked about that and how I feel like it should be looked at in terms of when they're when looking at cases like Charlie's and he's actually gotten off, which is a great news story from to, tonight as well, um, that it should be considered whether the opposition player is contributing to that, mm-hmm. in my opinion. That's all, yeah. it, that's all it was. Oh, well, that's good, mate. I actually didn't – I genuinely didn't read the um – Little uh, quote or whatever it was. So that's I feel like that's a really good point because you are right. I, mm. you know, players are trying to manipulate it a little bit and whatever it, whatever the tackler may be doing, they try and oh, you're always trying to you know win the ball. So yeah, um, it's in, it it is interesting because um, yeah, because obviously Charlie Cameron gets off, which is great for you boys. Um, what's your thoughts on on uh, you probably can't have too much of an opinion, um, and neither can I of the Zach Butters. And there's a bit of a Zach Butters Matt Crouch debate about um, because I think Matty Crouch got suspended and Butters didn't. Yep. Do you have any opinion on that, or are we all just yeah? Well, I was nah. I've got an opinion. I don't mind having an opinion. Um, I feel like I was watching both games actually because the Adelaide game was on that was finishing as the girls were starting to play netball. So I was watching um, that, and yeah, I, I thought the Crouchy one was a bit. It, it, it's obviously hit him in the head. He's gone down. Um, so it's not a great look. Uh, and the Butters one, I feel like, was very similar. But he didn't even get a free kick. So the opposition guy didn't even get a free kick. They just called play on. So I was like, I was sitting there on the couch because I was watching this game and it was pretty tense. And I was like, how is that not a free kick? So if it wasn't a free kick, how is it going to be reported? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So both of them, I felt like, were very similar. So if Crouch got a week, I feel like Butters should have. But potentially the reasoning was, I don't know what the reasoning was, but potentially it was because he didn't get a free kick or they did, the umpires didn't call high on the night. Yeah, yeah, it is It is an interesting one. I mean, people were talking about, not that we, yeah, talking about whether it's because obviously the brown low and, you know, Butters yep. is a genuine chance every year because he's a superstar. So it sort of goes back to my point, like if, I can't remember who he hit, but if that player goes down, and milks it that he got hit in the head. Well, he gets a free kick, definitely. But then Butters it gets looked at mm. because it's like, oh, well, what's happened there? Whereas in the yeah. moment, in the heat of the moment, he got up straight away because it was a close game. He needed to get up and compete for the ball. Then it just goes away and everyone just forgets about it. Yep. No, nah, I. that is a great point, Joshy. That is why you're the one who talks about all the controversial stuff and I just stay out of it because <laughs> I've got no bloody clue. Um. Anything else ca- catch your eye f- from the um, from a f- footy point of view on the weekend with other games other than ours? No, oh, I just thought it was a great weekend of footy, like a lot of close games. Um, right. The Saints lost by one point. Uh, Port won by three. Who was the other game? There was a two-pointer. Uh, there um, was Adelaide. Adelaide beat Carlton by two points. Yep. Yep. So it was just a really good round of footy, I thought. And, yeah, good on the, good on the Crows for taking on Carlton at Marvel Stadium and coming over. And and getting that win, that was that was very impressive. I watched that right to the end, so it was a great win for them. Would you still have the Giants as your number one seed at the moment? Uh, Giants or Geelong, I feel. Yep, I would too. I mean, yeah, they're almost on par, aren't they? They're both playing unbelievable. Jeremy Cameron's back, you know, probably the best player in the competition at the moment. His footy is. He's, um, he's having 25 and kicking a couple of snags and having five goal assists a game. I mean, not many other players are doing that. Um, no. So he's been unreal. But, yeah, it is. Um, I agree with that. It was a great round of footy other than obviously our result. But I um, I enjoyed every game. I, I watched most most of the game on games on Saturday as I was, uh, as I said, doing nothing in Adelaide. So, yeah, yep. it, was a, it was a good round. Um uh, we may as well move on to your game. If you don't have anything else from a footy sense from the weekend that just went by, we may as well move on to the preview for this week. Or do you want to do our underrated player of the week? Underrated? Your segment. Is that where we go? Your se- Is that where we go? I don't Wait, know. Wait, hang on. 
Is that what is that what we're calling it? I thought it was give love to a someone segment or underrated well, segment or give love to someone. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. Yeah, I've got one. My one here. I already had him. He's Will Graham from the Gold Coast Suns. And the reason being I like is it. I watched a bit of that game. And when you've got Noah Anderson, Matt Rowe, Took Miller, um, Sam Flanders, some gun midfielders, players like Will Graham, who I think was in his second game. Was it his second game? It was, right? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Comes out, shows the d- defensive hunger and the desire, has 14 tackles, which is probably a record on second game play. I'm not sure, but I just thought it was incredible and I loved seeing it. So, um, whilst Noah Anderson and Matt Rao, rightfully so, get, you know, all the flowers and, and get pumped up in lights because they are guns for the round, um, I just want to give a bit of love to Will Graham. So, well done, Will. Hopefully, he listens to us. Nice, mate. Mine is, so I've gone underrated player of the week, but I'll give love to this person too because I thought he came on and had a massive impact. He was the sub for the Crows, Sammy Berry. Mm -hmm. He came on and kicked a goal in that last five minutes or whatever it was. I think he had nine touches or something in the last quarter. Like he was very important for him late and, you know, he's sort of been a little bit in and out of the team, been sub, you know. uh, So I just thought he was a really stood up in a big moment against a big club and, and got those boys over the line. Um, so played an important role in that win. So he was one that I really wanted to mention this week. That's a great – well done. I love that. I agree with that. For, for what it's worth, I may as well mention my other one, speaking of subs, was the Giants sub. Was it um, Pete, Pete Ling? Jay, was it Pete Ling? Yep. How's his mark yep. to, to essentially save the game? Incredible. That was unreal. That was – yeah, mate, you're talking about subs impact. That was unbelievable by him. So he's someone who deserves a bit of love as well. Um, I love this segment. I love giving love to players. Love this segment. Uh, we may as well move on to your to the preview now, unless, as I said, there's nothing else you want to talk about from the round that's just gone by. We can move on. Now nah, let's move on. Let's get into the previews, mate. We'll go to yours, obviously, first. You play, what would you say, Saturday night? Saturday night, yep, against the Catters. Can't wait for this game. Hopefully, it's after we've won on Thursday, but I'll be uh, glued to the screen watching you play, mate. Uh, coming up against undefeated Geelong, you must be pumped. Yeah, it's going to be a massive battle for us. I think a lot of things that you know we took out of the Melbourne game will uh, will 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 take into this one. It's going to be a, they're they're very similar in terms of the way they I sort of think match up. I guess you could say um, they got a lot of good players, like you said, Jeremy Cameron's in some unbelievable form, but I feel like they've got probably 10 blokes in unbelievable form. Um, you know, Grind Myers, Brad Close, they're all playing those roles that they do for the team. So they've rediscovered their form of uh, a couple of years ago when they won the flag and, yeah, they're going to be a, a very hard team to knock off on Saturday night. So look forward to the challenge as we always do and always say. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a massive game for us. Mate, I, I couldn't agree more. It's probably the game of the round, to be honest, if with an early call on that because I actually haven't seen the other games. Um, what, like, what, what's your plan? Like how, without going too much detail, because I know you guys, you know, plan obviously indoors. But what's your plan on stopping them? I mean, as you said, their their small forwards are as good as anybody. Tyson Single is playing, in my opinion, all Australian form from his two years ago. Grime Myers probably the best kick in the AFL going inside fifty, and then you've got a guy like Jeremy Cameron who I just touched on, who's probably the best player in the comp. What's the what will the plan of attack be for you guys to be able to nullify that and then ultimately win the game? Well, they've been interesting because I feel like um, their stoppage numbers haven't been high and uh, they've sort of, it's almost like they don't give up the stoppage, but it's almost like they want to turn it over and then score. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to obviously try and win the win the ball on the inside and the contested footy, but it's going to be a bit of an aerial game, I feel. Like they love to dominate the air. And, you know, when you guys played against them a couple of weeks ago, you know, Westy went to Tom Stewart. And mm. played a really good role on him, I thought, that night. So whether we do anything similar to that and try and nullify their influence in the air, um, that's probably something that we'll look at. Um, it's still only early in the week too. It's only Tuesday. So still got a few more days to plan. But uh, they're probably the most important things, win the contested footy and then you know in the air try and nullify their aerial game. Yeah, I, I agree. Tommy Stewart is another one I didn't mention who yeah, we know how good Tom Stewart is. Um, your, so your game individually, I want to touch on that a little bit because your form has been, as I said, the last three games have been incredibly incredibly good. Is there 
what like what is your for those who I guess aspiring athletes who love going into the mind of a, a current athlete who's a genuine superstar like you, mate? What has what has been I guess your mindset going into the game? Like what are you are you what are you individually focusing on? How are you being able to have such an impact on the games that you've had? I mean, you can say stuff like contests, which I know you probably will, but I mean, your aerial stuff has been unreal. You've you've really I know you spoke about aerial stuff. I I felt like that was unreal last week. Your your decision making with ball in hand has probably been you know the best the last three weeks. What are some areas that you're going into the game thinking this is what's going to get me going, and then ultimately you perform? Yeah, it's a good question. I've I've I don't know. I could probably say a few weeks ago I was probably a little bit reactive and you know worried about more about my opponent because you know. I get given roles weekly on certain players and I reckon my focus had shifted more towards them than actually to to my game um, and mm-hmm. worrying about what I was doing and trying to make them, you know, some people or most people would say the best form of defense is attack. So mm-hmm. make them defend you, that kind of mindset. So I feel like going into games the last couple of weeks, that's sort of been my mindset in terms of making it simple and being like, well, hang on, I'm playing on you, but you're also playing on me. So mm-hmm. let's go to work and, and fight the battle. So um, that's something I've definitely focused on and had chats with, you know, Fags and Brucey and a few others, my old man at, at times. So it's, uh, yeah, they're all good little things to have. And, um, but yeah, like you touched on the, the contest work, that all just comes, I feel like that's natural to me. And uh, I like to, I've got words that I cue myself in with, but in terms of an overall focus it's more just yeah that one just make sure that i'm attacking the footy i'm moving my feet and getting around the the ground because that's my weapon and that's how i make other guys all opposition players worried oh, that's good it's good mate it's great it's clearly working so keep it up and i uh, i uh, wish you the best this week mate and i hope you dominate and hopefully you can um yeah beat an beat an undefeated team which no doubt will be a challenge but uh, i'll be watching mate Thanks, mate. What about you? Let's talk about Thursday night footy at the uh, Marvel Stadium. You've you've been going well too, mate. You've you've I feel like you've had an unbelievable start to your year, and um, yeah, like I said a couple of weeks ago, you'd be up there in the BNF because I feel like you're leading away from the front as you always do week in week out. But this year especially has been a massive star for you. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. Uh, the game. Um, so <laughs> we're uh, obviously. You didn't ask a question about the game, but I'll just touch on the game because um, I don't want to talk about myself. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a, clearly, you know, I feel like a lot of people have already written us off and, you know, I, I, I get it. I understand why our performance hasn't been good enough. So um, we've just got to worry about how we're going to perform. And I'm really excited. As I said, I, I don't want to repeat myself. So I'm not going to say, talk about that too much, but really excited about the game. Uh, St. Kilda. You know, they play a, a really attacking brand. They obviously maintain the ball a little bit and try to kind of kick mark and get the ball into the hands of their great users like Jack Sinclair and um, Brad Hill, who, who's who been in great form as well. Um, you know, they've got well, one of our players that we said is one of the most underrated players in the comp, that um, the Wind, Windhager, Mar- is it Marcus? Yeah, Marcus Windhager? Yep, yep. His form has been exceptional and... He's going to be a clear challenge for us on the weekend as well through the middle. But, yeah, we, we've just got to be able to nullify them from moving the ball. I think they're m- maybe number one or two from scoring from their D50 going you know, forward and scoring, and that just shows the weapons that they have. So we've got to be right on. And, yeah, feel like if our defense is up to scratch in terms of stopping that, we'll give ourselves a really good opportunity going forward because we'll get some really good looks, um, you know, even though – you know, even though the wins haven't been there from a win loss point of view, I feel like Mar- Jamara has has had you know an unreal year, jumping at the ball and taking grabs. Naughty's the same. Um, Sammy Darcy the last few weeks has obviously been in the side and really doing that well. So we can give them good looks as well. Feel like um, yeah, it'll go a long way to us scoring and then ultimately winning. So um, really looking forward to it. And I think another challenge again as well for us is going to be the midfield battle. We really want to get on top in there and um, really set it up because as, as I've said historically, um, when we win around the ball, win clearance, um, pressure's right up, we give ourselves a great opportunity in winning. So it's going to be a great challenge for us against uh, a really good midfield and against a really, really good ruckman in Roel Marshall who will be right up there in all Australian form as he always is. So really looking forward to it. Nah, it's going to be a cracking game of footy and I remember last year when you guys were in this kind of um, 
stage and copping a bit of heat. You played against us and you dominated us. So it's going to be good to see you go at it uh, this week against the Saints. I don't think there's anything else to sort of talk about, mate. You, you summed it up pretty well and look forward to seeing it all happen out there on Thursday night. Yeah, I agree, mate. It's I, I want to not talk about the Bulldogs anymore. Hopefully, our footy does the talking, <laughs> and and uh, the rest can be history. But I tell you what, I am looking forward to is the Derby, which is the West Coast Fremantle Derby. I'm really excited for this game because, you know, I said I said when we played the Eagles, they're going to be better than they're better than what their performance was against us, and I felt like they got a really good core of young players, and you know, clearly led by Harley Reid, who has fully blown me away these last couple of weeks. I feel like he is you – no, know, the rage was about him and how good he's going to be. And we've seen some of his potential up close. And um, his game on the weekend was outstanding. I cannot wait to see, firstly, this game. But I can't wait to see how the West Coast midfield, um, led by Elliot Yo and Reed, go against uh, Brayshaw, um, Caleb Sarong, Jago Mira. I'm so looking forward to this game. Yeah, it's going to be a cracking game. And last week to see, did you see uh, one of the, I think the West Coast boys has got on their their display profile picture, Harley Reid, don't arguing. Uh, Dustin. No. <laughs> did you see no, that? No. I saw it I pop did. up somewhere. I, uh, I did not see that. But I'll tell you what makes me laugh is, mate, it was, you know how they were obviously building the, the fend off um, for the game with Harley Reid and Dustin Martin? Come on. Yep. The fender it wasn't that much of a fend. I mean he fended him, but it wasn't a Dustin Martin fend. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was uh it was it's still pretty impressive. Some of the stuff he does is just is crazy. I'm like, geez, can I have some of that? <laughs> yeah. No, I I am um, seen as I said, seen him up close and what he does as an eighteen year old, like play, as you just said, jokingly, can you have some of that? I mean, you're twenty seven now and I'm mate. Players don't do that, and what he is showcasing is incredible. And in ten years' time, I cannot wait to see what his career trajectory has been because he has all the makings of an absolute superstar and a Dustin Martin two point oh. Which, in my opinion, in my opinion, Dustin Martin's the top three player of all time that I've ever seen. And for me to say Harley Reid is a clone of that is big raps. I think he's going to be an absolute superstar. Um, another game I'm looking forward to as well is. The Carlton Giants game, which is at Marvel Stadium, Giants undefeated. Carlton obviously, yeah. what is it, four and one, five and one now for them? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's going to be a ripper. Yeah, it's going to be a cracking game. I feel like that one's going to be. Carlton got a few injuries now, so it'd be interesting to see how the how they both go against each other. But yeah, the Giants to me are the team to beat at the moment. I feel mm, they um. They look good. There are some good games. So we may as well do it. Quickly do our tips. So Bulldogs, St. Kilda. Oh, who are you tipping there, mate? I think I'll tip you boys. I think you'll bounce back this week. Thanks, mate. I'm tipping Bulldogs. Uh, Adelaide, Essendon at Adelaide Oval. Uh, I'm going to tip Adelaide. Mm-hmm. I'm going Adelaide. Collingwood, Port Adelaide at the MCG. That is a – mate, I've just seen that. That is a, that is a ripping game. Uh, pies. I feel like they're getting their mojo back. If not, they've already got it back. Oh, and for what it's worth, Nathan Murphy retired today and I played with yes. him. Yeah, I played with him. And one, firstly, it's unfortunate he retired. And so I'm, I'm sorry. We're all sorry to hear because he, you know, clearly premiership player, but was only really young and was just getting his AFL journey going. But secondly, having played with him, um, you know, a, a really, really humble, like great person, um, very team orientated um, lovely, caring man, and um, you know I wish him and we wish him all the very best. What a um, what a way to play your last game. Obviously, not ideal for you, mate. But being in being in that game, but for him to go out a premiership player, it's only fair because he's a true true star. And I'm very sad to see him retire, but no doubt, whatever he does next, he'll succeed at. I like it, mate. Yep, I completely agree with everything you just said, and um, we wish him all the best in retirement. We do. So Collingwood Port, you said Maggie's. I reckon Maggie's. Carlton Giants. Uh, Giants. Oh, it is a hard game. Far out. I'm going to go Carlton at Marvel Stadium. Oh, am I going to go Carlton? Nah. Yeah, I'll go Carlton because you went the Giants. Brisbane, Geelong. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to go you, mate. Brisbane. West Coast v Freo. Optus Stadium. Are we both going Freo? Yeah. Okay, just to be different, I'm going West Coast. And Brado, I'm not joking, I'm going West Coast because I know you do our tips. So 
Um, which I think Fort is worth. I'm in front too, by the way. But I'm going to go West no Coast. No way. No way. Last week I dominated. I actually got one wrong last week, and it was your game. You blokes let me down. Oi! Don't say your like it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two more games Sydney v the Gold Coast at the SCG that'll be a good game too Swannies for me Swannies too and oh North Melbourne v Hawthorne which uh, both haven't won a game have they no uh, have they where's that nah North Hawthorne both haven't won a game that is at Marvel Stadium um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say North Melbourne I'm gonna say Hawthorne another uh, all right Another, and then Melbourne, Richmond have the bye. So really looking forward to those games. Um, no more footy. Any more footy from you, mate, before we move to our uh, Brooks Bloom of the Week? No, mate. All good. Okay. Well, I'll start because uh, you've already said mine, mate, and I'm doing it. Prior to Jenny. Thank you. Brooks Bloom of the Week. We love we love Brooke, as I say it every single week, and you do too. But my, my Brooks Bloom of the Week was Pride of Jenny, is Pride of Jenny. That horse and that run – you said it before, mate. Best run you've ever seen. That was incredible. That was incredible to watch. So, prior to Jenny's my bloom of the week. I like it, mate. I like it. Mine, I actually got off tipper tonight. I was like, oh, what should I do for bloom of the week this week? And I've just decided that I'm going to go with today's news in a WNBA draft pick number one, Caitlin Clark is my Brooks bloom of the week. Something different. I was like, I'll venture overseas over the water to uh, America and yeah, I think it's, she's going to be, you know, what's funny. I, I looked at, well, not funny. It's actually quite um, interesting. Have you seen her contract for the next few years? Nah, well, nah. what is it? Well, we we're talking about it today. It was about, so it, US, I think it's probably only about half a million dollars. So you compare that to what? over four years, half a million dollars over four years. Oh, so, so she's, she, she'd be making, what's that work out to be? I don't know. 150, 125, 125 a year. Oh my gosh. I actually so have if no she had, idea. If she had a stayed in college, she would have got paid more than what she's going to get paid going into the WNBA. Mate, I, that's mind blowing because for people who don't know Caitlin Clark, this woman is revolutionary. Like she is incredible. She is incredible. Like incredible. And the fact that she's making that, I mean, surely you'd think she'd make a, quite a fair bit with sponsors. Yeah. So 2024, $76,500. 2025, oh. $78,000. 26 85 And yeah, the rest, yeah. So there you go. You're kidding. So, mate, she has to be making a fortune with sponsors because- she will oh, she already. Would she would. She she will already be a top ten player in the league. She, like this lady is incredible. Yeah. Anyway, so she's my Brooks Bloom of the week. I like that. Um. Well done. For what it's worth, the NBA obviously just finished yesterday. Tomorrow is the first play the playing games, and you you're a little bit hesitant to give me a bona fide uh, uh, winner in the NBA when I asked you a couple of weeks ago. Has your opinion changed? Can you give me a champion? Well, do you have do you winning. have a bona fide winner? No, I don't really because I'm like oh, I don't know, but I think OKC, like you said, they're gonna be they're gonna be pretty special to watch. I feel like in the playoffs. Yeah, well, OKC is my they're my boys. They have been since yep. the Russell, Russell Westbrook, KD, James Harden days. Nick Collison, Stephen Adams, Kyle Singler, for what it's worth. Just in case those people out there think I don't know anything, Dion Waiters. Uh, Kevin Martin, there was all these players there that no one knows about. Uh, Reggie Jackson got drafted there when he was there. But anyway, uh, I don't think they'll win. I think they're too young. They'll, um, I reckon they'll just bow out. My pick, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, um, the standings here. My West winner will be, I don't want to say Denver because they are the best in the West. <laughs> Good rhyme. They are the best in the West. But, oh. No, oh, no, I'll say Denver, and I think Boston way too good in the East. So my win is Boston. They'll play Denver. I know it's boring, and I think Boston will win. I think that's the uh, the easy answer for everyone. Well, no, it's the right answer because it's the most it's obvious. The right answer. And also, before we finish up and end the potty, uh, for our fans who uh, love us, can you please convince Josh Dunkley 
to send me a trade for Najee Harris because we're in a uh, <laughs> in our number one league that we're in, which is the keeper league, where we keep our teams right. And you know, there's ten of us in it. We're doing trades at the moment because the tra- the draft is about to happen, and I have no draft picks, and I'm desperate for something. I'm trying to get rid of Najee Harris. So can you please direct message him, comment to him, say something to him to just give me Najee, uh, to take Najee Harris and give me something in return. That's fair. So uh, I'm going to end the podcast on that, mate. Well, we can't end it before we announce our winners of our Brooks Blooms ads and dunks uh, merch pack. So we've got two of those. So we've decided that we're going to do two a week. So uh, I've got it here. So last week's answers, we said to comment on our YouTube, which everyone did. 38 comments, which is great. Um, I'm Spark03 is one of them. So Ads was walking with Buku and Ed Richards. He saw Rock Smith, Luke Shuey, and a couple of <laughs> unnamed Collingwood staff members. Absolutely love the potties boys or the potty boys. Go dogs. <laughs> so he's one. James Glover, 2426. Adzi was same thing. Exact same answer. Um, so you guys are our winners. We'll reach out to you and send our merch packs ASAP. Um, and that brings me to this week's question. So you've got to go and comment this week. And this week's thing is who was our underrated or who did we give our love to this week? I was going to say my question would have been what was Dunks angry at that Tipper didn't do when he got when he got home from Melbourne? So right. answer answer one of those questions. Because the ones who really do love the podcast will listen into that and they'll understand <laughs> the pain that Josh went through. All right, Joshy, mate, before we uh, before we end the potty, you know how we always – we've had a really good thought, how we always talk throughout the potty and we come up with a couple of questions for each other and we don't know the answer. And we've got our great man, Brado, in our, uh, in our ears giving us the answer, but it might be a little bit too late or whatever it may be. Come up really, with a really good idea where – now, at the end of the potty, for our listeners who want to know the answer to the questions that we've asked, we can have Brado come over and tell us. What do you reckon? <laughs> Love the idea, mate. Let's get him on. Let's go, Brado. All right. Just because I'm <laughs> slow at what I do. But uh, ad, ads did ask what the main street in Adelaide was called, where all the hotels were, North Terrace. There we go. Uh, then we jump over to Bailey Banfield was the player that got hit by Zach Butters. Uh, and he didn't yep. flop. He didn't flop. So that was a good one. We had Will Graham. It was indeed his second game. That's a win by me. Well done. You were on for that one. <laughs> this one's a good one for Dunks because Sam Berry did have nine touches when he came on and kicked the match. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, I, well I done, know my mate. stuff. I see. And then, but Dunks also did think that he had a dominant performance in the tipping, but he only won by one tip because he did pick. <laughs> he picked Adelaide and Gold Coast, which is pretty good. Uh, but picked Frio to beat Port. Still well, Frio should have won that game. And, uh, oh, there was one more because Ads did say that Dunks is dominant overhead contested mark. Well, Ads has actually had two contested marks and uh, Dunks has had two contested marks. So you're on par. That that <laughs> little, that, 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 hey, hey Joshy, that basketball celebration where you do that too small. <laughs> yep, that's me. Do you remember me taking you on at training when I used to dominate you? I do, I do. But no, thank you, I don't want to start fights. I don't want to start fights here. (laughs) That's it. No, I love it. Thanks, Brado. Thank you. Thank you, Brado. We we can't wait to add that in because I feel like our listeners, they definitely would be scratching their head like, I actually don't know. So um, that's what we hear in the headset. So now you can hear Brado's great voice. So uh, we love Brado. Thank you for all the work you do for us. But that's it, mate. Now I cop the hate if I don't have the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, that's good. Oh, that's it, mate. You, uh, you're the rapper upper on this show, mate. So I'll let you do the rapper up ring. Thanks, mate. I'll do the rapper up ring then. Um, yeah, no, nah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, it's been another great episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. Um, thanks to Brooke and the team for getting around us this year, and uh, we appreciate all the support we get. So, uh, yeah, get on the YouTube channel and make sure you comment for the uh, the questions this week, and we'll get a, we'll get another uh, merch pack out to two people every week. Thanks, Adzi. Cheers, mate. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. 
Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.